Hoffman, and I'm an Ike educator for the Eisenhower Foundation at Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum in Abilene, Kansas. Today, we're going to learn about a special person who grew up right here in Abilene, Kansas. This person grew up to become a great leader in the Army during World War II and after the war, President of the United States. Using the book, I is for Ike, the ABCs of Dwight D. Eisenhower, we will learn fun facts about this special person. As I share this book with you, we'll take some short breaks so you can get up and move a little bit. And then at the end, I will have some special items to share with you that are called artifacts. And artifacts um, are objects or items that relate to the person or the time in history that we're talking about. Some of the artifacts will be mentioned throughout the story today, so pay close attention. Are you ready? Let's get started. The title of this book is I is for Ike, the ABCs of Dwight D. Eisenhower. A is for Abilene. Abilene, Kansas is the hometown of Dwight D. Eisenhower. The map on this page is an outline of the United States. Can you find the, the red heart? That heart shows where the city of Abilene is in the state of Kansas. Abilene is in the very center of our country. A is for Abilene. B is for brothers. This picture shows Dwight, his five brothers, and his mother and father. They are sitting on the front porch of their family home in Abilene. Can you guess who's circled in yellow? If you guessed Dwight, you are right. Dwight was the third of six brothers. B is for brothers. C is for chores. Do you have chores? Dwight and his brothers did too. What do you think is in that bucket? Yep, it's food. In this picture, we see two of Dwight's brothers feeding the family chickens. Dwight and his brothers were responsible for completing several chores in and around the Eisenhower home. Their mother rotated their chores so that the boys did a different chore or task each week. C is for chores. D is for David and Dwight. This is a picture of the Eisenhower family when Dwight was 12 years old. Dwight and his father are in the yellow circle. Dwight's father's name was David Jacob Eisenhower. When Dwight was born, his mother named him David Dwight, but it was soon switched to Dwight David, so there would be less confusion. D is for David and Dwight. E is for Eisenhower. If you look closely, at this picture, you will see men and boys working with iron and metals. Many years ago, a person's last name described the work they did or the job that they had. The name Eisenhower was German for iron hewer or iron worker. Today, we call these people blacksmiths. E is for Eisenhower. F is for fishing. Dwight loved the outdoors and loved being with his friends. If you look closely, you'll notice that he's sitting, what looks like we can't really see the bench, but he's there in the center. His shirt is yellow. In the background, there seems to be a tent. And there at his feet, there's a bucket again. And that bucket, I'm sure, was for the fish that they caught. Dwight and his friends would hunt fish, play cards, and camp along Mud Creek and the Smoky Hill River in Abilene. This is a picture of Dwight and his friends on one of their many fishing trips. Dwight's love of fishing continued throughout his life. In fact, as an adult, he and his brothers would take fishing trips all over the nation. F is for fishing. G is for general. This is a picture of Dwight as a general. I want you to look very closely right now. I want you to look at his shoulders. What do you notice up on his shoulders? There are stars, aren't there? How many stars do you see on his shoulder? Now look at the circle of stars in the picture. How many stars do you see there? 
Did you notice that the number of stars are different? After college, Dwight joined the army. He worked very hard and earned the rank of four star general. Do you see where the four stars are? Yep, they're on the shoulder of his jacket, aren't they? Okay, well, because he worked hard and had proven to be an excellent leader, he was chosen to lead our military during World War II and became the first American military general awarded five stars. So if you look at that circle of stars, those are the five stars, and that's why the difference of the stars there. G is for general. H is for home. Did you know that Dwight was actually born in Texas? He was. When, he, when Dwight was about one and a half years old, his family moved to Kansas. The top picture shows the boys at their first home in Abilene where they lived for about six years. And if you look really, really closely at that top picture, you can see the boys there, the corner of the house. Well, Dwight and his brothers really had no room to play outside of that house. And as the family grew and the boys got bigger, it just was even harder for them to find a place to play outside. So when Dwight was almost eight, his family moved to the home in the bottom picture, which was much bigger and had plenty of room for the boys to play. This house is now on the grounds of the Eisenhower Library and Museum. This house has always stood at this very location. And if you come for a visit, you can go inside the house and see all of the cool things when Ike was growing up in that house. You'll even learn some facts about where he could play in that house and where the boys couldn't go. And then after your tour, you can even come around to the front and sit on the porch right where Ike's at. H is for home. I is for Ike. We hear Ike a lot, don't we? Well, this picture shows Dwight and his older brother, Edgar, in the Abilene High School yearbook. Edgar, in the first picture, is listed as Big Ike, and Dwight as list is listed as Little Ike. Ike is actually an abbreviation of the last name Eisenhower. Ike was a nickname given to all the Eisenhower boys. However, Dwight was the only brother to continue using the nickname into adulthood. I is for Ike. J is for Jacob's Ladder. This is a picture of a toy that was popular when Dwight and his brothers were young boys. It's made of blocks and ribbons. To play with this game, you take the top piece and you have to hold it a certain way it's kind of confusing, but you hold the top piece, you flip it over in a certain direction, and you can watch the pieces fall, like taking steps down a ladder. Once you get to the bottom and the blocks tumble down, all you do is you switch that top block again and watch the blocks tumble down. J is for Jacob's ladder. K is for Kansas. Remember the map of the United States that we saw at the beginning of the book? Well, you can find the state of Kansas right in the middle of that map. Here you can see a map just of Kansas, and we see a heart, and we see a star on this map. The heart shows where the town of Abilene is located in the state of Kansas. The star shows where Topeka, the state capital, of Kansas is located. And you want to hear a fun trick you can try? Have somebody get you a graham cracker and if you bite out of the top right corner, you have Kansas. K is for Kansas. L is for Lincoln School. This is a picture of Dwight and his classmates at Lincoln Grade School. Dwight is the boy in the yellow circle. 
He was 10 years old when this picture was taken. Dwight and his brothers all went to Lincoln grade school. In fact, they lived right across the street. Check out the guy next to Dwight. I wonder if he got in trouble before the picture. L is for Lincoln School. M is for mother. This is a picture of Dwight and his mother Ida sitting on the front porch of their Abilene home. Dwight's mother was a very hard worker and she expected her boys to work hard too. Remember those chores we talked about earlier in the book? She taught Dwight and his brothers how to cook, sew, iron, wash, and bake. As you can tell by this picture, Dwight loved his mother very much, and he gave her credit for being the biggest influence in his life. M is for mother. All right, I think we've been sitting long enough. I want you to stand up with me, okay? I have a little song for you called Ike, the boy from Abilene. I'm gonna tell you the motions and you can do them with me or you can just make up your own. But I think we need to move a little bit and get our wigglers out, okay? So this is how it will start. For the first part, we're gonna hold onto our shirt or our collar and we're gonna sing. Eisenhower was his name, was his name, was his name. Eisenhower was his name, Ike from Abilene. All right, next thing we're gonna do is hold up five fingers. Ike had brothers, five of them, five of them, five of them. Ike had brothers, five of them. Ike from Abilene. The next part, we're gonna be doing some chores. So we're gonna march and we're gonna make some sweeping motions like we're sweeping the floor, okay? Ike and his brothers did lots of chores, lots of chores, lots of chores. Ike and his brothers did lots of chores. Ike from Abilene. And then the next part, remember I told you Ike loved to fish. So this time we're gonna go fishing and we're gonna throw out a fishing line. You ready? I went fishing with his friends, with his friends, with his friends. I went fishing with his friends. I from Abilene. Okay, let's try it one more time and we'll go through it. And I'm not going to say the motions. You can do them with me. First, we're going to hold our collars in March. Then we're going to show five fingers in March. Then the next part, we're going to sweep the floor with our chores. And then the last, we're going to go fishing. Ready? Here we go. Eisenhower was his name, was his name, was his name. Eisenhower was his name. Ike from Abilene. Ike had brothers, five of them, five of them, five of them. Ike had brothers, five of them. Ike from Abilene. Ike and his brothers did lots of chores, lots of chores, lots of chores. Ike and his brothers did lots of chores. Ike from Abilene. Ike went fishing with his friends, with his friends, with his friends. Ike went fishing with his friends. Ike from Abilene. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I want you to stand up. We're gonna do a quick stretch. I want you to reach up high and touch the sky. Go as high as you can. Get on your tippy toes. Reach, 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 reach. Stretch. Then I want you to bend down. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Try and touch those toes. Oh, goodness. All right. Now, I want you to take a deep breath in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Blow it out. Oh. All right, now I want you to sit down and be ready for the second part of our book. My friend, Mrs. Googler, an Ike educator, is going to finish the rest of the book with you. Hello, I'm Anna Googler, and I am also an Ike educator with Mrs. Hoffman. And we are going to continue with the book today, and we're going to continue with the letter N. Let's get that up for us. N is for NASA. This is a picture of President Eisenhower learning about a rocket. President Eisenhower established the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Now that's a mouthful. 
So that has been shortened. We just use the initials NASA right now. This agency put a man on the moon in 1969. N is for NASA. O, O is for outhouse. This is a picture of an outhouse. This is our modern day uh, outhouses are porta potties that you see at a festival or a fair. But this was the way that the Eisenhower family used the toilet until Ike was 16 years old. When he was 16, they put running water into the house and this was a big deal back in there. O is for outhouse. P is for president, and this is a portrait of Dwight D. Eisenhower as president of the United States. Ike was the 34th president from the 34th state, and Mrs. Uh, Hoffman told you that Kansas was the 34th state. He's the 34th president, so you can remember 34, and you'll have those facts. He served from 1953 to 1961. P is for president. Q is for quilt. This is a picture of the quilts like the ones that Mrs. Eisenhower made. People like the Eisenhowers didn't buy blankets, but they made scraps of fabric from shirts, dresses, uh, curtains, uh, aprons, anything they could find. And they would take these and cut them up and make lovely designs to keep them warm in the winter. Q is for quilt. R is for responsibility. In this picture, we see Ike as a soldier in his uniform speaking to soldiers who were under his command during World War II. These soldiers were about to go into a very big battle an important battle and Ike was there to encourage them and let them know how much their sacrifice was appreciated by the people of the world. During World War II, Ike was responsible for military forces of the United States and of the forces of our allies. He took this responsibility very seriously. R is for responsibility. S is for sports. The upper left is a picture of Ike as a member of the Abilene High School baseball team. The lower, I'm sorry, the left picture, the lower right picture is Ike punting the football for the West Point um, football team. He wanted to be a professional baseball player, but a severe knee injury uh, ended that, that dream for him, but he would go on to do bigger things. T is for Tank Corps. This is Lieutenant Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower next to a tank in 1918. This picture was taken right after World War I when tanks were a very new invention. And he, Ike learned about how these fighting machines worked and he was given the responsibility to, of teaching other soldiers how to use them in warfare, and that's a picture of a very old tank. U is for United States Highway System. All the blue lines you see there on the map are pictures of the interstate highway. That's what we call it now, it's the interstate. And when Ike was a young officer in the year 1919, he was charged with moving men and equipment from one edge of the country to another. And what the trip would take us about five days today. In those days, it took 62 days, over two months to move the men and the equipment. And that was way too slow for an army to have to move anywhere. So when Dwight was pre became president, he started the United States Highway System. U is for that. V is for vegetables. Can you see the corn and the carrots? And look at that apple, that big green apple, and there's a red pepper, and there's celery and grapes. Eisenhower, each of the Eisenhower boys was given 
a plot of, of garden, not a very big plot, but they were given a plot of garden and whatever vegetables that they grew, they could sell and they could keep the money. This was a big deal to those boys. Well, Ike wanted to make all the money that he could. So he went around the neighborhood asking people, what are your favorite vegetables? What would you have told him? Well, he found out that everybody liked corn and they liked cucumbers. So that is what he grew in his little garden plot. And he sold them all and he got to keep the money. V is for vegetables. W is for West Point. This shows Dwight D. Eisenhower as a cadet or a student in the United States Military Academy in New York. Ike began his life as a soldier at West Point, uh, which is a college for the Army. And he received a free education and began a life of service to his country at West Point. X is for extremely sick. This picture shows a man sitting next to someone in a bed who is extremely sick. When Dwight was in high school, he cut his knee very badly and it got very badly infected and the infection went all over his body. And that cut, we would have treated it with an antibiotic cream, possibly some antibiotics that you would take and it would have healed. But back in those days, they didn't have those medicines. So Ike got extremely sick to the point that they thought they were going to have to take his leg off to save his life. But Ike charged his brothers was sitting by his bedside, just like this fellow is sitting by the bedside. And he didn't have his leg taken off. And three weeks later, he was able to get up and walk out of his bedroom. But he had, it took so long for him to get back to his own healthy self that he had to miss a whole year of school. And there was no homeschooling and no online schooling back then. So he had to miss a year of school and take it over. X is for extremely sick. Y is for young Ike. This 1892 picture is the first picture we have of this little boy who would become president of the United States. Now, this is a picture of uh, his brothers, Arthur Edgar, and his younger brother, Roy. Now, does that look like a baby boy to you? Looks like he has a dress on to me. Well, it was a custom back in those days to dress children in dresses until they were potty trained because it was so much easier to change a diaper with that gown on than it was to mess around with all of the, uh, the hooks and the zippers and things that had to be on clothing at that time. And that is why both he and Ike in that picture have on a gown. Y is for young Ike. Z is for zeal. This is a picture of Ike holding up the victory sign. Let's hold up a victory sign. There you go. This is during a parade in New York City after World War II when he was a victorious general. There was also a parade right here in Abilene for his thanking him for his service of, in World War II. Zeal means great energy or enthusiasm. And Ike had zeal for service. And later on, he had zeal for serving as president. Z is for zeal. Now, we're going to do another song today. And this song also has actions to it. We're going to snap our fingers. We're going to salute. We're gonna make a circle. We're gonna hold our hand over our heart like we do with the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we're gonna make a sign for letter A for Abilene. Okay, there's A. Then we're gonna swing the baseball bat because I love to swing that baseball bat. 
and we're going to point to our brains. That's where we get our education. And then we're going to leave town. Yeah. All right. Let's start this. Here we go. Dwight D. Eisenhower was his name. Was I've gone the wrong tune. I'm going to switch. Dwight D. Eisenhower was his name. He was a general of greatest fame. Over the world, oh, he did roam. And he came president when he got home. Dwight grew up in Abilene, playing for the baseball team. Education was his mother's joy, and so West Point it was for the boy, yes. From general to president, in service was his country, his life was spent. I like Ike was his name to fame, Dwight D. Eisenhower was his name. We like Ike now, don't you? Give yourselves a hand, yeah. All right. Behind us, you maybe have seen some things behind me. And Mrs. Hoffman and I are going to tell you about some artifacts. Say that word with me. Artifacts. And these are things that existed during the time of Ike. They don't have to be old. Uh, a cell phone, for instance, is an artifact of today. But these are things, artifacts of the times of Ike. So here we go. All right, friends, let's check out some artifacts during Ike's lifetime. And I want to see if you can remember some of the artifacts from the book we just shared with you. Does this look familiar? This was the bucket. And remember, Ike and his brothers had lots of chores that they had to do. So a bucket like this could have held the feed that they used just like the, the brothers in the picture where they fed the chickens, might be used to gather eggs. And it also might be used to go camping. Remember the bucket in the camping picture? I think Mrs. Googler has something from the camping picture that was also used for doing chores. This funny looking thing is a milking stool. Now the Eisenhowers had a cow, but the boys usually didn't milk the cow. They were pretty big and kind of cranky sometimes. So Ida Eisenhower would milk the cow and this, she would set this on the barn floor and sit here and milk the cow. And it could be easily moved from one cow to the next if you had more than one. And in the picture we showed you earlier, Ike is sitting on just such a stool down fishing by the river. There you go. Ms. Hoffman? I can't bring this one up very closely, but if you look, here is Mrs. Googler talked about quilts. And remember, quilts, quilts nowadays, they're really pretty. And they, quilters go to a lot of work and find just the right fabrics. That's not what they did at that time. Quilts were made with whatever scraps they could find. This is an example of a quilt. Here, there's stitching and it ties. Something that's really fun about quilts that are made from scraps from other people's clothes, old clothes that you've outgrown or flower sacks is to go back and to look through the quilt and try to think, I wonder if this was a shirt. I wonder what this came from. Maybe this was pajamas. Maybe this came from a dress or an apron. Lots of history in a quilt, especially if the pieces are from other clothes that someone else wore or items that they, that were special to them. That's a quilt. This is a picture of Lincoln School. This was the school where Ike and his brothers uh, went to grade school. 
they had no excuse for being late because Lincoln School was right across the street from their house. Also, their mother could see them on the playground during recess. And if they were not behaving the way that she felt her boys should behave everywhere, even at school, uh, they heard about it when they got home. This is Lincoln School, the original school where Ike and his brothers um, went to grade school, Lincoln School. Remember the picture that Mrs. Googler showed you where they were wearing, the boys were wearing what looked like dresses or gowns? This is a type of gown similar to maybe something that they might have worn during that time. Sometimes they would have head coverings too, especially the little babies, but you'll notice that the gown, and see how simple that was? How would you like to wear a gown now as a boy? I don't know, might be fun. Okay, that was a dressing gown. And here is a Jacob's Ladder. Blocks of wood with ribbon and you just, and then you turn it again and there it goes. These are for sale. These are for sale in the visitor center here at the Eisenhower Center. So when you come and visit us, you can buy a Jacob's Ladder in the gift shop. And you can also have somebody Google it for you and you can find directions on how to make them on the internet, the Jacob's Ladder. Recognize this? Yeah, remember Mrs. Googler said he loved baseball. This is a baseball mitt. This isn't actually Ike's, but is similar to something Ike may have used as a boy. And even as he grew up and was a young man, he loved to play baseball. When Ike got out of high school, he went to the United States Military Academy for the Army at West Point. And I read, a, read to you about West Point. This is a West Point cadet's hat, just like the one that Ike wore. And later on, his son John wore just such a hat too, because both of them went to West Point. So this is from West Point Military Academy. We have a few artifacts right here. Here's a picture, and this was a picture that was actually on R for Responsibility. And remember the picture of Ike speaking to the paratroopers. This was a very famous photograph that you may have seen before. So we have the picture of Ike talking to the paratroopers before they went out on their mission. And look closely at Ike there. So it look like he's telling them something really, really important about the mission, doesn't it? Do you remember what I told you, something he really loved to do? He loved to fish, didn't he? Guess what they're talking about there? Fishing. Mm -hmm. But what Mrs. Googler is holding is a helmet similar to what these paratroopers were wearing in this picture. And if you look closely, I'll bring it in really close to you. Remember the stars we talked about? There are the stars on his jacket. And this jacket he made famous and it was called the Ike jacket. And when he stood, if you see pictures of Ike and even if you come to the museum and you see there's a great big statue, you'll see Ike with his hands on his hips. This is the Ike jacket and we have an Ike jacket. It's kind of too big to pull forward, but if you look closely, you can see right back here with the stars at the top on his shoulders Okay, and then he had on the other arm a special patch. The shape patch. Okay, and that's the eye jacket. Now he had the, the stars on the shoulder of his jacket, 
But remember in the story, we also talked about the five stars. So when you are here, you'll notice there's a lot of things that relate to five stars. He was a five-star general, remember? First one, the United States. And if you look closely at some of the statues, you might find some more stars. In the book, we talked about the tank core. This is a toy tank and tanks were very new back uh, in the 1920s. And this is a kind of, this changed warfare forever more. In World War I, they were still using horses to, uh, for men and soldiers to uh, ride on. And when the tank came into being, uh, when they invented it and perfected it, there were no more horses needed. And so the, this is a toy tank like Ike's Tank Corps tanks. So as we move through this timeline of artifacts, we've gone through his boyhood, some of the things that um, he may have had or used during his boyhood. And as he went to uh, West Point Military Academy to become a leader in the army, then as he led the troops as a general in World War II, the tanks, and now we're moving to the next part of his life, which would be his presidential years. This is a hat that was given out at, at campaign rallies, and this one has I-K-E, Ike, on the top of it, and people, thousands of people on the floor of that campaign would put on their Ike hats, and this is one that we have from that time from the campaign rallies. And to go with those rallies, Ike, remember that nickname? He was the only one that kept that nickname. And boy, what a great decision that was when he decided to become president because it, re it just rhymed with so many things and it just was a really fun thing that people did like Ike. And so you'll see, I'm an Ike educator. When he was running for president, lots of people had buttons, campaign buttons that they would wear. I like Ike. And even on Mrs. Googler's badge, we still like Ike. And look at this blingy one. This is my favorite, girls. <clears throat> it's shiny. Shiny things. Isn't that fun? But there were lots of different types of campaign buttons that people would would wear this one reads don't let this happen to you and it's a hole in the bottom of the shoe vote for ike so i like ike was very very popular so they had the campaign and he won people loved loved, loved Ike. And here we have the presidential seal. So this would have been on the front. Ike was also one of the first, well, the first president to actually use television to talk to Americans about what was happening in the United States and talk about his policies. And on the front of his podium would be the seal of the president of the United States. And if you look, when um, President Trump has a speech, he has the same type of seal on the podiums or wherever he is and speaking somewhere special, that seal will be with that. If he had a letter, letterhead on his, on his uh, stationery, there would be the presidential seal. Okay, so he went from running for president and winning, and we have an election coming up this year, but even back then, when he ran for president, people loved him so much that he was elected president, not once, but twice. So, presidential seal. Well, we have one last song for you. And this song, let me adjust this. We'll get this up on the screen. This song was used in 1952 in Ike's campaign 
The words were written by a famous composer whose name was Irving Berlin. You will know his song, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. And he wrote the, the words and a famous cartoonist named Walt Disney um, wrote, wrote the, the uh, did the animation, excuse me. So Irving Berlin wrote the words, Walt Disney did the animation, and here we go. We're going to see I Like Ike. And there are some actions too, but they're real easy. You just point to your, point away from yourself, point to yourself, and then point to everybody. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner, beam the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We don't want John or Dean or Harry. Let's do the big job right. Let's get in step with the guy that's up. Get in step with I. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner, beam the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We got to get where we are going. Travel day and night for president. Let Adelaide go the other way. We'll all go with our eyes. You like Ike, I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner, beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We'll take Ike to Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. Thank you. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask them at this point. You can have mom or dad type them into the computer. While you're thinking about these, I have a few more things to tell you about Ike. Uh, when Ike was a little boy, this was right after Abilene had been a root and tootin' cow town. You see Western movies on TV, and you see the guys galloping in town on a, on a horse, uh, guns a blazing. It wasn't quite that wild, but there were cowboys a lot in Abilene. And when Ike was a boy, some of the older men that lived in Abilene had been cowboys. And he would hear the tales that they told about what, how cowboys thought about life about the things cowboys did and did not do. And those rules of the cowboy were also rules that Dwight Eisenhower took up. And as when he got older, he kept those rules and those principles and the way that cowboys thought, he kept those in, in, his, in his mind. And he loved to read about cowboys. Uh, there was a cowboy author named Zane Gray, who wrote many, many, many Western novels, and Ike read every one of them. So we have, we have a cowboy-loving president. He even has some cowboy boots that are really something to see. Do you have any questions? Have we any questions? Yeah, we do have one question. So um, they wanted to know if your songs and the words are available anywhere on your website we will put them on. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was our only question. You got a lot of compliments and they enjoyed the music. Um, oh, I have another question here. Did Ike have any children? Yes, uh, Ike and Mamie had two children. Uh, the first one, and they nicknamed him, and they nicknamed him Icky. Now, Icky didn't mean what it means now, but that was his nickname. Icky got very sick with scarlet fever. And back in those days, there weren't good medicines to take care of it. And unfortunately, that first child died. Then they had John. And John Eisenhower was the one that grew up and went to West Point, just like his dad did. And John Eisenhower uh, passed away in 2013. So yes, he had two sons, only one that lived to be an adult. Any other questions? I think that's all we have, but thank you so much for all your time and your lovely songs and all the great information. We appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome. And uh, from all of us here at the Eisenhower Foundation, the Eisenhower Center, 
We wish you a good day and please come and see us soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you for everyone that attended. Yes. Bye. Bye.